evening. You're watching the news on Croatian television. Croatia has protested Slovenia's decision to issue fines to Croatian fishermen, sending Ljubljana a diplomatic note. Slovenia claims the fishermen illegally crossed over into its territory in Savudria Bay, part of which is claimed by both countries. Croatia and Slovenia were unable to resolve their border dispute through arbitration. Slovenia said last month it would begin implementing the ruling in the case, and the fines appear to be part of that policy. Croatia rejects the ruling over violations of procedure by Slovenia. In a statement, Croatia's foreign ministry warned that as members of the EU and NATO, the two countries had a responsibility to resolve issues peacefully. Croatia will be forced to respond in the same way in order to protect its territory. We believe that Slovenia's announcement constitutes conduct that is contrary to good neighborly relations and European values. Croatia's police said that they would respond with fines of their own. The Interior Ministry said it had records of more than 200 legal crossings of the border at sea by Slovenian fishermen. Most of those violations were committed by the same eight fishermen and in the same location, according to a statement from the ministry. Police said they would be sending out fines to the fishermen. President Kolinda Grabar Kitarovic said that it was unfortunate that fishermen were being dragged into the dispute. I had hoped this could be avoided because it's irresponsible to send out fines before an agreement has been reached. Croatia has constantly been pushing for talks, for an agreement. We've offered some proposals that I think could be acceptable to Slovenia. This can only escalate the situation. Our fishermen and their fishermen should not have been dragged into this. Citizens should not have to pay the price. Here's how one Croatian fisherman in Savudria Bay responded to these developments. I don't think these fines will amount to anything. We've dealt with them many times, and if anyone should be fined, it is the Slovenians, because they keep crossing over into our waters. It's about time we did that. Our patrol boats are out there keeping watch, but they shouldn't let them cross the line. We should be allowed to fish in peace. They are fishing on our side, not the other way around. The leaders of the SDP and the People's Party, as well as Croatian MEP Ivan Jakovčić, addressed today Slovenia's decision to fine Croatian fishermen. Unfortunately, the government hasn't resolved this problem over the past year. I expect them to cover all of the costs that may be incurred by our fishermen and that neither they nor their families have to endure any hardships because of this. Of course, if and when these fines are actually delivered, they will be forwarded to the Interior Ministry and these people will be protected, because they have done nothing wrong. Unilateral action by either side is inappropriate. This was expected. However, I advise the fishermen not to pay the fines and I urge the authorities in Zagreb and Ljubljana to finally reach an agreement and stop creating an atmosphere that makes it impossible for us to get along. The leader of the Social Democrats, Davor Bernardic, has launched a national campaign aimed at improving the lives of young people in Croatia. He came out today to pass out leaflets and urge young people to get involved. We must ensure that the state provides aid for housing rentals to stimulate the market and bring down prices. We want more full-time jobs and not more contract workers. Young people should not be used as free labor. We want student and volunteer labor to count as work experience. Like the SDP, the bridge party Most is also concerned about the exodus of young people from the country. They outlined a series of proposals today that aim to encourage young people to stay. Most plans to draft at least 20 bills addressing a wide range of issues. They include offering mothers the option of fewer and more flexible work hours, bolstering e-commerce, tax breaks and evaluating the work of judges, to name a few. This is the point where every person decides whether he or she wants a country with a young population or one that people are abandoning, whether they want constructive leadership or the kind of leadership other political parties have offered us over the past 20 years. 
Today is International Holocaust Remembrance Day. On the 72nd anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, where one and a half million people perished, most of them Jews, the world is remembering all of the victims of the Nazi genocide. In Osijek, the Holocaust took the lives of 1,500 people. 300 survived. The Jewish community in Osijek paid their respects to the victims by placing flowers and wreaths at the Mother and Child Holocaust Memorial. Take a stand. Take a stand. Get rid of all the things that are bad for us. Not for the Jewish people, but for everyone. This is why everyone ends up suffering. Let's for once set off for a better future. In sports, Croatia's Mate Pavic and his partner Oliver Marach have won the Australian Open men's doubles crown. They beat Colombian duo Juan Sebastian Cabal and Robert Farah in two sets. Pavic and Marach added another victory to their streak and claim their first Australian Open title. Meanwhile, Croatia's Marin Cilic will play Roger Federer in the final of the tournament on Sunday. <laughs> Moderate to heavy clouds are expected in the interior tomorrow. There will be some sunny spells in the afternoon, but clouds will set in again by evening. It will also be cloudy on the northern Adriatic, while the central and south coast can expect sunshine. There will be a moderate northwesterly on the Adriatic, a westerly along the shore. There could be some traces of a morning northeasterly in places. Morning lows will range from minus 2 to plus 3 inland and from 4 to 9 on the coast. The day's highs will be between 9 and 14 degrees. Temperatures will be slightly cooler in areas shrouded by fog. The three-day outlook for the interior calls for mostly dry and stable weather. There will be some passing cloud cover and a chance of morning fog, especially on Monday. Temperatures early in the week will be slightly warmer. Cloudier skies are expected on Wednesday when there is a chance of rain in the mountains. Good conditions are expected on the coast on Monday, but rain is expected in the north on Tuesday and Wednesday. The far south will remain sunny and warm. Temperatures in the north will be slightly cooler due to clouds and fog. <laughs> And that brings us to the end of our program. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow.